This is Dugaris Essays, that is two three page opinion pieces on topics such as species dominance, the global state, politics, femtotech, religion, society and education. Written by and read aloud by Prof. Dr. Hugo Dugaris. This is essay number three entitled Friendly AI, that's artificial intelligence. So, friendly AI, a dangerous delusion? Question mark. Now the flyer itself. Friendly AI, a dangerous delusion? Question mark. By Prof. Dr. Hugo de Garris. Email Prof. Hugo de Garris at yahoo.com. Abstract. This essay claims that the notion of friendly AI, that is, the idea that future intelligent machines can be designed in such a way that when they modify themselves into even greater levels of intelligence, they will remain friendly to human beings, is not only impossible, but a dangerous delusion. Reasons for its impossibility are given, as well as explaining why the notion is not only deluded, but dangerous. 1. Introduction I'm known for predicting that later this century there will be a terrible war killing billions of people over the issue of species dominance, that is whether human beings should build artelects, that's artificial intellects, which could become so vastly superior to human beings in intellectual capacities that they may end up treating us as grossly inferior pests and wiping us out. To combat this horrible scenario, the Singularity Institute, that's uh, singinst, S-I-N-G-I-N-S-T dot org in Silicon Valley has been set up to ensure that the above scenario does not occur. The Institute's principal theorists, Eliezer Yudkovsky, Y-U-D-K-O-V-S-K-Y, has coined the term friendly AI, which he defines more or less as given in the abstract. He claims, I think correctly, that trying to prevent artelects from wiping out humanity is the most important thing on humanity's agenda this century. He hopes that he and others will be able to prove mathematically that it's possible to design an intelligent machine that, of logical mathematical necessity given its design, will be forced to remain human friendly as it redesigns itself into ever higher levels of intelligence. I will present a set of arguments which I think refute this vision and then comment on the political desirability, or otherwise, of this vision. 2. The arguments against friendly AI. Let me start by assuming that friendly AI can be implemented. Then the next question is whether humanity would be unanimous about implementing it. In other words, for this case, does, can imply, ought? I think that the more ardent of the cosmos, the ideological group of people who want to build Artelex and see themselves as God builders, will argue that their main goal is to build Artelex that are trillions of trillions of times above human intelligence levels, who would be immortal, thinking a million times faster than humans, with unlimited memory, who could change their shape and architecture in milliseconds, could venture out into the cosmos, etc. These cosmists would prefer that the Artelex be built even if human beings get wiped out as a result. If making them according to friendly AI designs, designs inhibits or even blocks their path to achieving their godlike capabilities, then the cosmos will want the Artelex not to be made AI friendly. Hence, even if AI friendly designs can be created, it does not automatically follow that they will be universally applied. The more ardent cosmists might go underground to build the Artelex the way they want and to hell with humanity. The cosmos have a slogan, one artelect is worth a trillion trillion human beings. On the other hand, if friendly AI designs are impossible to make, then there's no point in discussing whether they should be implemented or not. I will now present some arguments which claim to show that the notion of friendly AI is impossible. A. The evolutionary engineering argument. Ask yourself. How is it possible for a creature of a given intelligence level to be able to design a creature of greater intelligence? To be able to design a creature of superior intelligence requires a level of intelligence that the designer simply does not have. 
Therefore, it is logically impossible to use a traditional blueprint design approach to create a creature of superior intelligence. For example, my good friend Ben Goetzel has written a book recently called Building Better Minds. Uh, I think he, uh, it's, he retitled it. What's it now called? Engineering General Intelligence. Engineering General Intelligence. So you can look it up on Amazon. In which he lays out a humanly conceived, that is by himself, plan to build a near human level intelligence. He will only be able to go so far with such an approach. There will be limits to the ingenuity of his plan slash design due to the intellectual limits of Ben Gersel. So how can such limits be overcome? Human beings have been building superior intelligences for thousands of generations by having sex. Their children often grow up to be smarter than they are. So how to explain that? Well, by shuffling the genes. When the genes of, an, of the mother mix with the genes of the father, and only one of each mother-father pair of genes is used, it's possible, by blind luck, to arrive at a DNA blueprint that builds an intellectually superior child. But there are limits to this process as well. It gets statistically harder and harder to generate ever higher intelligence. For example, the odds of creating an Ed Witten are uh, one in a billion. So, how did modern Homo sapiens come into being? How did nature build us over millions of years? It did so by using evolutionary engineering, that is, by selecting genes with superior fitness levels due to random mutations of DNA. This slow, blind process has resulted in us and is very probably the only approach humans will have to build machines a lot smarter than we are. But if we use evolutionary engineering to build, for example, artificial neural networks for our artilects, then the complexity levels of these networks will be so great that we will be unable to understand them. They will be a black box. One of the reasons I stopped my brain building work was that I got bored evolving neural net modules for artificial brains. These modules were a black box to me. They worked because they were evolved, but I had no scientific understanding as to why they worked. I was doing great engineering, but lousy science. After 20 years of it, I finally got fed up and turned to other research topics that tax my own biological human brain more, that is, pure math and mathematical physics. Let us assume that the evolutionary engineering approach is the only way to create creatures of higher intelligence levels than human beings, and that the complexity levels of the evolved brain circuits is too complex for humans to understand. Then we would not be able to predict the attitudes and behavior of these creatures towards us. The only way to know how they would behave towards us would be to build them. But then it's too late. <laughs> they would exist and might choose to wipe us out. Hence, with the above logic, we are faced with a dilemma. Either we limit ourselves to humanly designed blueprints for intelligent machines that are incapable of reaching superhuman intelligence levels, or we use an evolutionary engineering approach that could attain superhuman intelligence levels. If we use an evolutionary engineering approach, we cannot be sure that the, result, the resulting artilects would be human friendly. B. The cosmic ray argument. It's almost certain that the circuitry will be that will be used to create intelligent machines will be nanotech based. For example, to build a near human level artificial brain that is not the size of a room will necess necessitate the use of nanoscale components. Even if friendly AI nanocircuits could be built, they would then be subject to the random mutations generated by impacting cosmic rays that can be very energetic, zapping the nanocircuits in random ways and generating rogue artilects. Nature would be doing the same kind of evolutionary engineering as the humankind mentioned above. Since these mutations would be random, their consequences on the behavior and attitudes of the artilects towards human beings would be unpredictable. Hence, even if the initial unmutated nanocircuits could be made human friendly, they would not stay that way. C the Asimov naive argument. Isaac Asimov, the science fiction writer, is famous for his three laws of robotics, which were intended to ensure that the robots in his stories remained human friendly. For example, the robots were not allowed to harm humans, nor allow humans to be harmed. One can imagine fairly readily that it's possible 
that it is probably possible to program robots in a conventional way to behave like this, with the proviso that the robots are less intelligent than their human programmers. But once the robots become smarter than humans, they would be able to examine their circuitry, detect the humanly created parts, find them moronic, and delete them if they want. Hence, Asimov's three laws cannot help us. They are naive. Forget Asimov. Three. Friendly AI is a dangerous delusion. Hopefully, the above arguments have convinced you that the notion of friendly AI is a delusion. But why might it be seen as a dangerous delusion? If the future politicians who have to decide whether to legislate or not against building artifacts of superhuman intelligence believe that friendly AI robots can be built, then they will be much more likely not to legislate against their construction. On the other hand, if they learn that the artificial brain building community has a consensus view that friendly AI is impossible, then they will be far more hesitant. If friendly AI is indeed impossible, then humanity has a much tougher choice to make, namely in the form of a slogan of the cosmists, quote, do we build gods or do we build our potential exterminators? Spelling this out, humanity will then be forced to choose between building godlike artifacts and risking that humanity gets wiped out, or not building artifact gods and seeing humanity survive. The first option is species side. The second option is deus side. This choice will be the toughest that humanity will ever have to make. If the pro friendly AI people can persuade the politicians in the coming decades to go ahead with Artlek building on the assumption that friendly AI is valid, then if, then if it is not valid, then it is a dangerous delusion, because the politicians may then give the green light to the Artlek builders to build Artleks that were thought to be human friendly, but in reality turn against us and wipe us out. Cheers. Prof. Dr. Hugo DeGaris. Ciao.